so i'm gonna start sharing to what was going on with me when i start to read spiritual sacred books because i in the early 30s i already had a full practice private practice was making a really high income but as i'm reading these books I'm starting to feel confusion because my body starts talking to me that I am not on the right path. I am not sure what my purpose is. And it was a very uncomfortable space because the financially successful practice that I built was not answering the question to what's my purpose? Am I on the right track? And what am I doing with this money? Because most of this money I was spending on nonprofits, going to Kenya, building wells, helping wildlife, because obviously something was not working. And the more I was financially successful and the more I was alone and I didn't have a man next to me. And so I started discovering and learning and trying to figure it out. So what is then my purpose? And so the psychology that I've learned for so many years and the counseling and hypnotherapy and life coaching did not give me the answer. So what is my purpose? Why am I here? And so that acknowledge, and now if you'd like, you can start maybe taking notes. Ayurveda means Ayur, means life, and Veda means knowledge. And by reading Bhagavad Gita, I start to understand what is actually my purpose in life? Because the whole thing, the whole life, I was just chasing success. Because that's what the modern world is showing us. A lot of cars, homes, bags, shoes. And I had it all, but I felt still unfulfilled. Fulfillment was not there. And so a lot of scientific knowledge is giving us the answers that helps our mind, head analysis, right? But it doesn't give us the answer to our soul. And so, again, Ayurveda is the knowledge and the knowledge of life. And Ayurveda answers the question, what is your purpose? How to make a relationship work? And when the main duty for us as a women, before we can even get to the purpose, we have to understand that the duty of our life is not about career and success and making money, the number one duty is to pass the exam with the most important person in our life that we're constantly going to be battling. And who do you think we'll, we'll always be battling with? Our partner. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So the biggest exam, which is our duty to pass, is with our partner. It's the most difficult one. And it is our duty to pass it. Ayurveda says that a person got to have four goals in life. Without this goal, the person will never will understand their true meaning and purpose in life. And I would like for you to start thinking, what do you think will be the first goal? For me, something that was very hard and that I'm still working on is just to always try to be as physically healthy as possible, like keeping a a clean, pure body, um, because that also helps in other ways with the soul. Yes. So being physically healthy. Very good. Gabriella, we'll get to it because it's a big part of it, but it's sub goal. It's at this level. But if we're talking about four goals, the major ones, the general one, it's not there yet. It's going to be sub goal, but I, I see what you mean. And it's a very important one. So what do you think uh, the major goal is? And so we will, st uh-huh. spiritual practice, meditation. So now we're going to start, I guess, covering it. So in Sanskrit, it's called Dharma. D-H-A-R-M-A. -A. Dharma means duty. And when people think of duty, obviously they're thinking about duty to wife, duty to kids, duty to parents, duty to work, duty to make money and everything else. And it's part of it, but it's not the biggest part. The biggest part is our duty to understand us and why we're here. This should be our biggest goal in life. And what um, Vedic gurus 
so thousands of years ago that when the person don't understand their dharma, their duty, that they start having a symptom and their symptoms look like this. They're running busy. I need to get to work. I need to cook. I need to clean. I need to make money. I need to get married. I need to get divorced. <laughs> they're running, running. And they're constantly feeling anxiety. And this is the biggest symptom. They don't understand their true purpose and duty in life. That means they're not discovering why they're here. What is their purpose? This is the first symptom. The second symptom they've noticed that in the soul chakra right here, the person, no matter how much money they're making, no matter that they're married and have kids, that they achieve all their desires and their wishes, they still feel in their soul unfulfilled. And that's what was happening to me in my early 30s. Here I have financial success. I have a nice home, nice car, lots of clients, lots of money. But emptiness is there, unfulfillment is there. And no matter how much vacations and bags you can have, you still feel the emptiness. This is the second symptom. And if the person is ignoring those two symptoms, what do you think starts to happen? Physical things start popping up? Yes, yes. We start to deteriorate on the physical level. Because our body, our soul starts to send signal. Oh, here's migraine headaches, migraine headaches, or here's allergy, here's allergy. But the person is ignoring it. Then it starts to have asthma, asthma. Serious migraine headaches, panic attack. The person goes to doctor, they're giving the medicine. Medicine helps a little bit. But the problem now starts to happen in the kidney or a little bit in the liver or maybe in the heart, or maybe in the legs ache or back ache, and the person is still ignoring it. Because our modern medicine is not designed to answer the question, why I'm here? And if the person is not answering the questions, the physical health is gonna continue to deteriorate. First physical, then it's mental, and then all physical, mental, emotional, and if you're ignoring that, five, six, ten years later, then the body starts to give you, here's tumor, wake up. Here's cancer, wake up. What are you hearing, ladies? Have you ever felt that you've been chasing something, but what it was costing you is the health, deterioration in health. And we as a women tend to turn to sweets. Do you know why? To numb and distract ourselves to answer the most important question. What is my purpose? And when you're ignoring that, then later it becomes, oh, let me add alcohol because sugar is not enough. Because the sweets are giving the signal to our brain, let me get the love. Let me get the love because the sugar gives to the brain 10 seconds illusion that you're getting the love that you're craving. And if mom did not give the love between age zero to five, when you grow up, you're going to be chasing it all your life and you will not get it anywhere until you're going to turn to the only source now that can fulfill you, fill you up with this love. And the source is here. Not with husband, not with kids. But most modern women think, let me just get married so I can get love. Men think, let me just have sex and I'll get love from sex. But is it working? It's not. We're bankrupt. Because at this point, only him can fill us up through meditation, affirmation, or a prayer. Your choice. Because otherwise we're walking around empty. Oh, boss, give me money. I'll buy a, a Gucci bag or a purses or a shoes. Maybe I'll feel good, right? <laughs> it's like addict. Addict to get cocaine or, you know, heroin <laughs> or a glass of shot. It's, it's kind of like that, isn't it? Any questions? If a anything opens up so far, who wants to share? 
I actually, when I found out I was pregnant with my daughter, I was 300 pounds and completely believing that I was very happy. But it is, it is true. And to be in a place where you really believe that you're happy and was unable to look in the mirror and see physically how unhappy I was. Yes. <laughs> you know, that reflects. Yes. Was- yes. And a lot of doctors are now saying, admitting that sugar is 30,000 times more addictive than cocaine. That says a lot. That says a lot, right? And like we said, it's, it's socially. Everywhere. Yes, and it's socially acceptable and, and everywhere. Yes, yes. It's so dangerous. Yes. Anyone else? Anything else is opening up? I want to I was thinking of when I was in college. Yes. And um at that point in time, like, I was really angry a lot with, like, my mom, and because I felt, um, I was really, at that stage of time, I was thinking, like, I want a family, I want kids, like, I was thinking, like, about my kids, and I was really upset at my mom, because, like, she had, um, boyfriends in and out always coming and and I had trouble with my relationships and I kind of blamed her I was like because of you I didn't know how to treat men like Like, of all that anger was getting to me I had my daughter straight out of college like I graduated and then I got pregnant and within like six months after giving birth to her like I really was transitioning like I was on my spiritual high horse after I gave birth and my love jaw went away and I was because I was so full of like new love you know yes. like I had this unconditional love of a baby yes yeah really great that you are starting to touch upon a really important thing because when we as women get angry and by the way that meant too, we experience number one pain in the stomach what's getting hurt is liver and what liver does, it accumulates stones. How do you call this organ that is close to the liver, the small organ? Is it the gallbladder? Or yes, the yes, oh. gallbladder that starts to accumulate the stones. And what's happening? We have this anger towards the mother, towards the father, towards the husband, towards the children. And instead of sharing this frustration with them, but in a effective matter not screaming and yelling but really communicating i'm angry with you because i am unfulfilled or something but again we're talking about expectations but not having expectations and just communicating our anger we can start releasing them from our soul from our body but what women mostly do i'm gonna stuff myself with sugar with food so i'm gonna suppress this anger i'm not gonna say that to my mom i'm not gonna say that to my husband and so what suffers first is liver gallbladder and then also jaw and teeth and then a lot of people are grinding their teeth because they want to actually bite bite the husband bite the mother because the two-year-old suppress anger because something was happening in the childhood between the child and the mother and it never bite mother because it's not acceptable and so now an adult is grinding the teeth because the anger is still sitting there and so ayurveda answers these questions because we typically go to doctors trying to fix our symptoms but ayurveda says you gotta look inward because for everything every organ is actually connected to our emotions and feelings and if we're clearing emotions and feelings we don't need to stuff ourselves we don't need to drink alcohol we don't need to turn to artificial (laughs) chemicals to make us feel happy or high if that makes sense yeah very good i never thought about it until you just uh phrased it like that uh, but I lived out of state, so physically away from my family, and I was 28, and I remember calling my parents, and I was starting to lose my weight, that physical journey, and I remember telling them and sharing, like, I'm like, I know I'm 30 years old, and there's nothing you can do about it, but I'm just starting to process how really upset I am about my childhood you honored yourself you needed that you you needed that time 